because this is kind of a, her new family that she's made with um, kindred spirits here in this shelter. Daisy shed tears at being separated from loved ones but sat down to dinner with others who had been through similar ordeals. The survivor, now 25, said, Christmas Day was hard. I missed my family massively. It was heartbreaking. We spoke on FaceTime and I had a little cry. Although it was tough, the women in the refuge made it a Christmas to remember. No staff came in that day, so it was up to us. We had our own kitchens, so one of us cooked the vegetables, someone else did the meat, others did puddings, and we laid the table with a Christmas tablecloth and crackers that had been donated. There were people of all religions, so we treated it like a Sunday dinner, so no one was left out. We had a glass of wine, and the people who did not drink alcohol had some juice instead. Then after dinner, we pulled all the cushions on the floor and watched a Christmas film on TV. It was so touching to see our seven families together, bonded by our shared experience. Daisy's former partner intensified his reign of abuse after she fell pregnant with their child. When I was six months pregnant, he threw me down the stairs, she said. He told me to say I'd been tripped. The midwives kept asking if there was abuse in my home, but I kept repeating, I tripped. They ended up getting social services involved, who said he was a risk and had a prison record. I knew he was dangerous, but I was scared of him. I felt overwhelmed. I did not know who to trust, but my social worker really understood about domestic abuse. I started trusting him and telling the truth. Together with her six-month-old son, Ben, Daisy first moved to a refuge on the other side of the country and still traumatized by the abuse, she found the accommodation too big and encountered others who had problems with, di with drug addiction. The women's aid volunteer said, At this point, I still did not realize how serious the abuse was and I still felt controlled by him. Although I had left him physically, it was like his personality was trapped inside my head. My hope is that people realize that they are free to leave. Leaving is one of the most high-risk times for a survivor because the abuser usually gets violent. So it is important to get safety information from a domestic abuse charity or a trusted professional. Those are all just snippets from the article. I would really recommend you go check it out and see the story of Daisy and others. It has other testimonies on there. I will put that link in the show notes as well as some information on who to call, how to get help. If you're in a different country, ser seriously send me a message. We'll figure something out. I definitely want you to get help. Be safe. Stay safe. For those of you that are struggling with depression and things like that that also get really ramped up this time of year, please reach out as well. I'm very, very aware that this is a really hard time of year for a lot of people, so please reach out. Get the help you need. Stay safe. I love you so much. Have a great night. Bye.